Howdy once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, or at least this is the skeletal remains of Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. This is episode number 70 of my This and That series. I have quite a few things to show you. We'll be going out in the garage here in a minute to show you the plunder that I picked up at a recent garage sale. Not too much activity this season yet at auctions. I did go to one and buy a bunch of micrometers and a few things like that, but I'm unable to put any of that footage in the videos that I have taken with my iPhone. I'm using a pretty worthless uh, piece of software called Easy Transfer, and it isn't easy and it doesn't work and it cost me five dollars a month. Do any of you have a good way of transferring video files from an iPhone 13 onto a computer. I almost yet give up on that, but everybody else seems to do it with great ease. Why don't we start out here with this great caricature that Tony Batchelor, and thank you Tony for that, of Portland, Oregon, quite an accomplished artist, made of me and sent it to me framed and all, and I really appreciate that. But let's look at some of the details here. First of all, I've got six arms, and I sure wish I did for some of the things I do, but much of what he's showing here are things that I talk about or do or catch words that I use in my videos, but starting with this arm up here, there is a crescent wrench, and notice the arrows because I have talked about which is the correct way to use it, and there's that toothbrush, and it even says on it, I don't think you can read it, wife's toothbrush, and I'm wearing my Optivisor, and I'm holding a Bernard Parallel Jaw pliers, and a Sterrett Combination Square, and holding one of my little steam engines that I made, and notice that my t-shirt says rim shot. I used to do a lot of that, haven't lately, and there I am drinking the ever-present cup of coffee, and on it it says, read books. So, <laughs> I got a kick out of that. I hope you did too. I don't know how many times I have mentioned these wonderful fine point extra long markers, but people keep asking me, where do you get that, or what is that? I don't know. They're not watching the other videos, I guess. But, these are Pica brand, and you can get them on from Amazon. Remember that uh, Doug Bollinger gave me that. Yeah, I love them so much I still haven't opened this one. I'm using the several that I have already opened, and they last a long time, but they're quite costly. I've been showing this QR code in several other videos, and it's great for getting instant access to my project drawings on that site that's called MyHeap. Now, in order to use this, of course, you need a QR reader, which is free, but watch how to use this because I had to learn it myself. Click on that, and it'll more or less take a picture. I don't know if you heard it buzz, but it instantly goes to that page where you'll find a lot of links to my videos as well as the blueprints for many of the projects that I made. So give that a try. It's pretty simple. I recently bid on this Powercraft Monkey Wards Logan Lathe 10 inch at an online auction. I bid about five or six hundred dollars. I was outbid. It went for seven or eight. Looked in very nice condition. Came with lots of uh, attachments. But uh, let's take a look as, uh, at that little lathe that got away. And here it is being loaded. It cost 75 bucks to have it loaded. Probably a bargain at that. Kind of broke my heart, but I don't really need another Logan lathe. Okay, now I'm over in an adjacent town, and I'm going to an all-man's garage sale. This is about a month ago. There was a lot of plunder. There's my wife. I think she bought a garden hoe. Now, there was a little lathe, a six-inch lathe, and I asked the man where it was, and he said, uh, it's already gone, and he said, I'm the one that bought it, and he was a man that worked there. Well, I didn't need another six-inch lathe, but there was some neat things there, and I did manage to squander 
about $50 and there's what I got in the back of my car. Let's go out in the garage now and take a look at these things in real life. Okay, I'm out in the garage and I hope you don't think I went too green on you, but I did buy an electric bicycle, which I really do like. Now let's take a look at the things from the auction and the garage sale. Okay, this is the Atlas drill base in two axes that I bought. Now it's missing the regular table, which I have one of downstairs on my other one, but this was $16 and for some reason this plate was mounted on there and I had a heck of a time getting it off but it needs a good cleanup but is in actually quite good condition. They must have sold a lot of these and this was the little table that I used in high school to make that Stewart steam engine and accurately drill and lay out all of the cylinder screws so these are pretty neat really. I'm not going to talk much about this. I paid five bucks for that at the garage sale. I wasn't sure what it was, although I had a hunch, and that will be in an upcoming What Is It series. When I see something that's mechanical and unique, I just have to have it. So I bought this also for five dollars. No one at the garage sale knew what it was. I've covered up the label here. That will also be on a future What Is It? At the garage sale, I picked up another dial caliper, not that I need one, a bit generic, but in perfect condition. I think it's brand new, but this was kind of the find of the day, and if you are looking at the still picture at that garage sale, you'll see a bunch of T-squares, you know, traditional wooden ones by Dietzkin, but I just love that design. It's an aluminum head, and then when I look closely at it, it's a Sterrett. I had no idea that Sterrett made drafting T-squares and I found this in an older, oh from the 30's, Sterrett catalog. This is a 24 incher. They made them in uh, several lengths. They also made one with graduations, I see, according to the catalog. A bit rusty and I'll probably never use it, but I do love the design, do you not? When I was at that recent auction with the Logan Lay that I just showed you, I met a man by the name of Andy Evans, and he bought a job lot. There were three or four straight edges, so he said, you want one? I said, sure. So this is a straight edge that was used at that motor rebuilding shop probably for 50 or 70 years, and it was obviously put out by Van Norman Head Grinder Company. Pretty heavy. At that recent auction, well, I guess it was a couple months ago, not the engine rebuilding one, but another one, I bought for 20 bucks a drill doctor, and I, it's, it's marked $135. I thought it was brand new, but it has been used a little bit, but it was in the box with an extra wheel. Everything is there. I do plan on doing a video if there's any interest in it. And, you know, I use it, I sharpen a few bits, and it works quite well. I was shocked as long as the tip of the drill bit is not too badly damaged. It's just a little bit dull. It works really, really nice. So I will show that to you. I was surprised. Not much to it, which all, always makes you wonder how good it can be. If they sold it for 135 that means they made it for 130 or for $30. The cost to manufacture was $30. So how good can it be for $30? Better than I thought. And lastly, at that garage sale, for $5, I bought one of the Peterson Products band sanders. Uses a 1 inch by 42 inch belt. My class has made a lot of them. The student's name, Frank, I'm not going to tell you his last name, is stamped right there, 1976. This had been mounted on a board with a motor because I see sawdust there, so it was used. Notice the two wheels. And by the way, he did a terrible job on this wheel, chucking it up. See how thin it is? Probably vibrated like crazy. So I'm missing a wheel if I want to set it up, but I do have my 3D patterns and a 3-inch wheel, so I may 
in a project do that. But this was our number seven item, I think, uh, for Peterson Products. The table tilts. So there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven castings in all. Some of the kids machined the top, some just sanded them a little bit. There are oil light bearings in all of the wheels. This really was a pretty neat project. And there are some modifications that I made on this over the years. So this is one of the later ones that we made. I guess we'd already been making them for about eight years when this was made. It required a rather large flask. This is a pretty big casting. Five dollars. So what do you think of that? So now I have samples of almost all of the Peterson products, original projects, other than the bandsaw, which I don't even want one of. And recently at a friend's house, he has one of the disc sanders. So I'm going to show you pictures of the 10-inch the disc sander that we made so many years ago. So what, what do you think of that? Remember, all of the patterns had a number on them because we were selling plaster patterns to teachers so their classes could make this. You can see where he misdrilled it there, where the nut would have come too close to the casting, so I had to have him redrill it. All right, enough critique. Let's take a look at the pictures of the disc sander. Okay, these pictures aren't real good. This is in my friend Russ's basement. And at that time, he was the auto teacher, and I gave him virtually one of every one of the projects. So there's the 10-inch disc sander, the table tilts. There were one, two, three, four, five castings. The motor is set way too high here so that the table does not come anywhere near the center of the disc. And that's a salvaged motor. But we made a lot of these too, and they worked quite well if you could get the student to bring in a motor. Notice that this is mounted on an old desktop from a tablet type student desk. And this wasn't a Peterson Products, but he has one of our grinders that we made. These weren't very good. The design isn't good at all. Used a motor and a belt. But he's been using it all these years, and it does have two ball bearings. I guess that's it. Hey, make sure you watch the video of uh, pouring iron. Not too many people watch that. I often talk about my shop teacher friend in California named Roger Taylor, and he sent me this picture. And while Peterson Products was active, there was a company that distributed castings and projects that was our one of our chief competitors and that was the uh, Jamaica company and it was Rogers professor where he graduated that ran that company he's now 100 years old but there is a drawing of their version of a little band sander so I thought that was interesting a great pictorial drawing continuing with uh, my talk about Roger Taylor as a teacher, his class has made this little disc sander a little smaller than mine, but notice that in the background there, there are two match plates, one for the discs and one for the trunnions or whatever those are called. So he said they made quite a lot of them, and it was sized so they could do it on a 10-inch lathe. And notice how burnt up this match plate is. <laughs> And that happened a lot in my classes too. So a lot of my match plates were mounted on aluminum because they would burn anything that was made of wood. Thanks, Roger, for sending those pictures. A little update here on that recent project. This was the South Bend jig for grinding tool bits. And several people said that it is quite tedious. Oh, I said that it was tedious to make all these graduations. Some of them aren't even necessary, and some of the people that made these said that they made the graduations rather than on the sleeve. They just had graduations here. That way they only needed to do it once, not for each and every sleeve that they made. So 
Also, I was a little bit critical here of the South Bend claiming that they had misaligned this hole here with the V groove here and they were not on center and some people, I think they are correct, said that they did that on purpose so that as you tighten this it drew the sleeve up tight against the face right here. And I believe they're, they are right, that was done intentionally and the original set screw had a point on it. It wasn't a dog point, it was a, a V point that would pull it in so it locked it radially and axially, if those are the correct words. Go back and watch that video if you are interested in that. I hope that some of you find this interesting, but my neighbor Richard brought over and loaned me this old Brownells catalog. Now, I've talked about Brownells gunsmithing uh, supplies and so on. They're out in Iowa, but this is catalog number two from 1949 to 1950 and at that time he was a full line Atlas dealer for Atlas machinery so let's take a look at a few pictures in here I'm not going to show you any of the other stuff although this is a very interesting catalog to read so the company Brownells was almost brand new at the time so let's look at these Atlas pictures all right, there's the Atlas grinder. Here's that neat little Atlas uh, drill grinder. I had one of those at the high school. They were quite good, except they tie up one wheel on your bench grinder. There's their drill presses, and my dad had that exact model, and it, my brother took it to Cody, Wyoming. I don't know what happened to it. It was $99 at the time. There's the Atlas milling machine. I don't see the price on it. And by the way, I'm going to show you this in a few minutes when we get out in the garage. I just bought one of those at that garage sale that I was talking about. More milling machines, all of the attachments. And these pictures would have been taken right out of the old Atlas catalog, of course. There's the Atlas Shaper. Can't imagine a gunsmith using one of those, can you? And there's the all new Atlas lathe. Thank you, Richard, for loaning me this catalog. I'll get it back to you tomorrow. And they got Sheldon lathes, and that's the exact model that I had at the school. Not a good picture to show you, it's too black. And there's all the Sheldon attachments and a lot of woodworking equipment here as well. And there's the Mead grinder. I had one of those, only a newer model. Hacksaw, power hacksaw. Ooh, Bernard. Baumgren. And they do not offer all of those pieces of equipment anymore. Thank you for watching Pete Bay 1 through 10. There'll be a few more in the fall of 2022. But now I've got a little money to squander at the next auction or garage sale. On a personal note, there are three of my grandkids going to the prom. Little Henry there isn't going to the prom, of course, but Sophia on the left, she's got a beautiful gown on. And that's Andrew on the right, and they're at the city library. There's a beautiful mural on the dome, and that's where the pictures are taken. And lastly, and certainly leastly, uh, just a, uh, a complaint here. You don't have to listen to this, but I told you my channel is going downhill. I just am not getting views. I don't know what is wrong. I don't know if it's just the uh, uh, algorithms that will not direct people to my videos, or is my content that bad? And since I'm 78, almost 79, I am contemplating on just closing it out here because I'm not getting enough views to even uh, bother doing this anymore. Although I certainly enjoy it and I might have one or two good years still left in me before my permit to breathe expires. Well, this is Mr. Pete saying so long and I hope I actually get to see you next time.